Good morning, everybody. Morning. Good morning. Yeah. Are we still all sleepy? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. We're sleepy. <laughs> How is everybody this Monday morning? Hmm? Let's wake up, wake up, wake up. Okay, the gospel for today comes from St. Luke, chapter 11, verses 29 to 32. I can see you, Shabby. Okay, um, we'll just read first the first part of this gospel and then I'll try to explain it, try to understand it. Okay? okay, so, while still more people gathered in the crowd, Jesus said to them, This generation is an evil generation. It seeks a sign, but no sign shall be given it except the sign of Jonah. Just as Jonah became a sign to the Ninevites, so will the Son of Man be to this generation. You remember the, the story of Jonah? Yes. Okay. And how? what is the sign that Jesus is talking about here? What is the sign of Jonah? That Jesus is using as a metaphor for this generation. Okay? What happened to Jonah when uh, when he was trying to escape from our Lord, uh, from from uh, from the mission that God had given him? He was swallowed by a big fish, right? And he strayed, stayed in the belly of the fish for three days. So. That is the sign that Jesus was talking about. He was using that as a metaphor to talk about his own sign, that he will be the sign. That the Son of Man um, will be the sign of this generation. And Jesus was talking about how he was going to die and how he was going to be crucified and how he was going to be in the belly of the earth, so-called. Right? That he was going to be uh, buried and rise again come back to life just the way that Jonah uh, stayed in the belly of the fish for three days and was spewed out and came back uh, came back to the Ninevites right so the same thing is true with um, with Jesus that's what he was trying to say okay that he was the only sign that was necessary he was going to be crucified and he was going to rise again okay? so he said if by that time you still don't believe, well, then there's really a big problem with you folks. <laughs> That's why he premised this. He premised what he was saying by, by the words, this generation is an evil generation. It demands a sign. What our Lord wanted to say was, you know, after all of my preaching, after all the miracles I've shown you, you still want proof that I am the Messiah for you? You're still trying to demand that I give you signs? Well, that only means you really, really do not want to believe. You really, really do not want to uh, open your minds and your hearts to believe in the gospel and believe in what I am revealing to you, that I am the Messiah. Of course, what the, the Jews had in their mind is, well, wasn't this the carpenter's son? Right? Isn't this Jesus the carpenter's son? So how can he have come by all of this knowledge and all of this, uh, uh, you know, miracles and great works? And then only recently we also heard some of them saying, right? Oh, it's by the power of Beelzebub that he's casting out devils. Right? I think that was Saturday's gospel. Beelzebub is the, is the devil, the prince of devils, as they called him. That's the other name of Satan. Okay? So... Uh, so, but our Lord said, okay, after everything I've shown you, everything I've preached to you, you still do not believe. Well, so there's going to be one final proof. And that is, I'm going to be crucified. I'm going to die and I'm going to resurrect. Okay, hopefully you will believe by then. But let's take a good look. Okay? Uh, this thing of asking for signs is something that is... Uh, very common i'd like to think it's a common part of human nature because um we tend to it's not easy to be believing uh what you don't see or it's not easy to believe the things that other people tell you and that you want signs you want to have proof 
that this is what God wants for you or this is what um, this is really the truth right in the same manner that you know we just celebrated the uh, apparition of Fatima the hundred year an apparition of Fatima and people were also demanding for a sign from Bernadette or from the Blessed Mother that you know show us a sign that these apparitions are really are true and so Our Lady well interceded and God uh, performed the miracle of the dancing sun okay so it was only by that that people believed that the apparitions were true by the way parenthetically if you're watching the news I, I haven't verified this but the news item came out recently saying that in Benin Nigeria where the bishops recently consecrated Nigeria to Our Lady there was also the miracle uh, of the dancing sun. What's a dancing sun? Uh, well, it was just like the sun moving about, getting bigger, smaller, and doing crazy patterns. Apparently, this was last uh, October 13, oh. this year. Yeah, there was a big gathering in Benin, and the bishops of uh, Nigeria consecrated uh, Nigeria to Our Lady, and Our Lady showed approval. Heaven showed approval, so to speak. And uh, the miracle of the dancing sun was um, experienced by, by them. Anyway, uh, and, and uh, in the history of, of the Jews, they always kept demanding signs, right? They demanded signs from Moses, see? Uh, the, that whether he was really the one sent by God to free them from, from uh, Egypt. They demanded signs from the prophets. They, they demanded signs from Jesus Christ. So, uh, you know, everybody wants to demand a sign to prove that uh, they're speaking the truth or that, uh, they, that what they say really comes from God. Now, uh, but let's ask the question, why is it very difficult to believe, really? Why is it difficult to believe the things that God has revealed to us? Why did the Jews had have a difficult time believing in Jesus? And up to now, why do we sometimes not believe our parents and people in authority that God has sent for us to to uh, to help us uh, understand the will of God? Okay? Like in your case, if you do not obey your parents right away, it's. It is a reflection that you do not believe your parents when they tell you things you need to do. And that's the same thing, same thing is true for anybody in authority that we do not immediately uh, obey and listen to. It's because we, we don't want to believe. See? And why is that? What is the root cause of all of that disbelief? You know what it is, huh? Okay, very good, Sophia. Pride. Pride. And pride is the root of all sin. So, sinfulness and pride come together. Sinfulness is a consequence of pride. Eh? But the real, real uh, um, root of the matter is our pride. It's so hard to believe, even God already, uh, he, He's already talking to you directly. No matter how many more miracles he performs for you, if you are proud, you're full of pride, you will not believe. Okay? You will not believe. And pride means, how do we understand pride? What does it mean? Puffed up. Yeah, love for self. Excessive love for oneself is what pride is. Right? That for you, there's nothing else, there's no one else better, there's no one else more intelligent, there's no one else prettier or handsomer, or there's no one else better than you, 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 I, 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 me, myself. See? Too much concern for oneself, uh, disordered love for oneself. See? See, even love has its proper place. Even love uh, should be put in order. And the disorderly love for oneself is pride. And the more we have of it, the more deaf we are to the things of God. Okay? The more, the more self-indulgent we are with ourselves, the more we do not listen to other people.
the more we do not listen to the Word of God, the more we do not listen to people in authority. Okay? So we have to battle pride. We have to fight against that pride that eats us up and that's going to give us uh, trouble uh, in life. Okay? We have to be fighting against pride. Now, question is, how do you do that? How do you fight against pride? How? Joe, you're raising your hand? Huh? Yeah, by being humble, of course. Humility is the, is the uh, virtue that helps you fight pride, right? But concretely, concretely, how can you express that? How can you express being humble and how can you express, uh, how can you fight against pride? I have, okay, I have a, a, a very simple um, formula, okay? And last night when I was thinking about this, I concocted this. This coat. And you can quote me on it because this is original. <laughs> you know, simple, simple formula would be this. Remember how our Lord said, those who want to be first should be last, right? And occupy the last the last place all the time, right? So here's a here's a way to be to fight against pride. Be the first to serve and the last. To deserve. Be the first to serve and the last to deserve. What do I mean by that? Well, serve. Serve other people. Have the mentality of always being the servant of other people. If you go out of your way to serve other people in the big and small things that, that they might need your service in, then you are forgetting yourself you are not you are you are putting yourself in the last place that you are the last one to deserve any attention or any merit or any uh, favor yourself this is where our lord's words uh, pick the last place comes into place see pick the last place be last okay to deserve anything so be the first to serve other people and the last to deserve anything for yourself. If you have that mentality and if that's the way you operate your life, then that is a sure way to uh, acquire the virtue of humility and fight against pride. And if we are humble, then our ears would be open to listen to the Word of God and to listen to people in authority who bring to us the Word of God and the will of God for our souls. Okay, that's it for us, folks. You have one minute. I still have one minute? You want me to talk some more, Mia? <laughs> that's all. That's all we're going to talk about today. Have a good day, everybody. We're off to Mass. And today is the last day that Liam is going to be with us. Hello, Liam. Hi. Hi. <laughs> He's going back. He's going back to China tomorrow. Okay, so let's all pray for a safe trip for Liam. Okay, and today is going to be his last day. Okay, well, have a good day, everybody. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>